So uh, thank you very much, Preeti. So uh, after the talk on physiology, which uh, discussed so many important parameters, uh, which we really need to understand if we have to uh, ventilate optimally. Optimally. So coming to the most of advanced ventilation. In this presentation, I would uh, like to discuss about uh, to understand the concepts of the variables we define here. So if you have to understand the most of ventilation, we really need to understand how the method is started, what are the limiting factors and how the way is happening. So uh, this is important to understand. If we understand that, then only we will be able to know about various mode of ventilation. Because often we are fascinated with the newer mode of ventilation, advanced mode of ventilation. We really think that this mode of ventilation is wonderful. But at the end of the day, it, it is the person behind the most permission which is important. So next important thing would be uh, to know where to do which one. So this was very well explained in the previous uh, lecture that uh, when all ventilators, mostly they derive a gas flow from the central source. They are just set to some pressure and mix the gases to the blender as we require some air and some FiO2. So air oxygen mixture is done. And then it, via a flow regulated uh, wall, it goes to the patient. And once the inspiration is terminated, there is exhalation and which is regulated by exhalation wall. There are several factors with what will determine the positive and expiratory pressure and other things. So this is how a breath is like we have a time, we have a, a variable which can be either pressure or volume. In the neonatology, mostly it is the pressure uh, control ventilation. So here it is the time, then a breath is initiated. It is the inspiration. Then once the destined uh, inspiratory time is achieved, there is exhalation and it turns to the baseline and again, again a breath is started. So how and what is the type of breath to understand that we need to really understand what are the various breaths. So there is a machine, there is a patient and both should have some interaction. So either can be completely uh, ventilator driven, either it can be a patient driven and assisted by the ventilator. So a patient initiate a breath and ventilator uh, controls it. And subsequently there could be a spontaneous mode, which we ha happens in the NIVs. So in the understanding of the mode, most important three things are that each breath, what is the factor which would uh, lead to the initiation of breath? That is called as trigger. Then how is the control? How much breath is to be going there? Patient ko kitni saas hai? That limit. So that is the control variable is limit. And then the third one is the how would be the inflation terminated? In understanding of the mode, it is the inspiratory part which is the most important and which is often controlled by the ventilators. Often the exhalation becomes passive. So how the inspiration would be terminated? That would be the cycling. Ventilator has to cycle to the another breath. So that would this so the, these three things are trigger, limit, and cycle. So these we call as a phase variable. Trigger determines the inspiration to begin. That is at the A part. Here the a breath is being initiated. So ventilator has to know when I have to start a breath. So we would see what how it does. Then other factor would be the uh, the limit. So what regulates gas flow in the ventilation? We push the gas, a machine push the gas in the patient's lungs. So how the gas flow occur during breath, that is determined by B. So B is the part, this, this portion is limit. So limit could be other predetermined pressure. We want to breath to be a, a particular level of positive uh, PIP, that is peak inspiratory pressure, or it could be tidal volume. And then at the end of the inspiration, there would have to be cycling. So patient has to know when I have to cycle. The machine just cannot keep pushing the gas flow inside the lungs. So there has to be some uh, cycling mechanism till when patient has, uh, has to receive the flow. So what causes the breath to end is the cycling variable. So let us first start with the trigger. So it initiate inspiration and in the mandatory breath, most often it is a time trigger uh, uh, ventilation like you have, we have set up a uh, rate of 30. So every two seconds, machine knows that I have to give a breath. Every two seconds, I have to trigger. There are trigger windows, and every two seconds, uh, machine would initiate a breath. Then there are patient trigger breath. Patient trigger breath, we have to understand that these patient trigger breath always work on the basis of flow sensor. We have to have a flow sensor, but, uh, and the 
machine detects the change in flow or pressure, then it uh, senses the pressure change and then it de determines that we have, I have to initiate a breath. I have to start a breath to the patient. So change of pressure or flow would be uh, sensed by the ventilator and it initiates a breath. So a trigger can be either ventilation decided by the ventilator or by the patient. So let us understand the time triggering. So we have a trigger window of three seconds. So, say uh, hypothetically, we take a breath rate of uh, 20 breaths in a one minute. Then every three seconds, machine, a ventilator knows that it has to give a breath. So it has maintained this trigger windows. This is the one trigger window, another trigger window, and every uh, at the every three seconds, ventilator knows that I have to start a breath. So it is uh, determined by the machine and at the at the preset interval. So in this slide, what we can see, there are trigger window of three seconds, and in between. There are some breaths which are initiated by the patient. So the magnitude of this spontaneous breath would not be as such uh, as per the ventilator strength. So these are the small spontaneous breaths which are occurring between the trigger windows of the three uh, one one ventilator breath. Then once the patient starts triggering, the ventilator would sense the change in pressure or flow in the circuit, and it will start the breath. So in this arrow, there is a change in the pressure or flow which ventilator has sensed and it has given its own breath. Then after that, baby is breathing. So ventilator knows that I have to give 20 breaths to a particular strength which has to be taken care. So this is initiated by the patient but assisted by the ventilator. After that, if the baby wants to breathe, baby is breathing. Again, ventilator would wait that at the end, it, 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 it saw that patient initiated one breath and again at the end of uh, uh, another trigger window, it is not causing any, uh, suppose if the baby is not initiating any uh, breath or trigger, then ventilator would again give a breath. So this is a mandatory breath. Again, here patient has made an effort, which ventilator has sensed. So ventilator knew that in three seconds, I have to give, a, give three breaths of a particular strength, which has been set by the user. So these three breaths were given by the ventilator. So this is how it works. If the patient has, has initiated, ventilator would assist. If not, then ventilator would do it by time triggering. So here how it happens that patient is triggering and being assisted by the ventilator. So how, what we have to do with the trigger? Does anybody set the trigger in the ventilators which they use? Anyone? So. Uh, as we have understood that trigger is something which has to be initiated by the breath and often uh, it is the ease of the patient trigger which uh, the ventilator has to sense. So if the baby is sick, we don't want the patient to exert much to determine the by, to sense by the ventilator. So in case of the uh, patient is sick, we need to set the trigger at the uh, low sensitivity, very high sensitivity. And uh, if the patient is uh, being weaned, then we can uh, change the trigger accordingly. So the, there are, when ha we have to have a spontaneous trigger, then in ca that case, there are flow trigger or pressure trigger. A flow trigger is more sensitive and more physiological. Then next variable coming to the limit. So lim limit determines what, reg what regulates the gas flow during the breath. So in the ventilator breath, there is a gas flow. Ox air oxygen mix mixture is being pushed by the ventilator inside the machine lung. And variable could be limit like pressure. So we know that there is a peak oh, inspiratory pressure that is PIP. Then there is a flow rate and there is a volume that is tidal volume. So it could be PIP, it could be the flow rate or it could be the tidal volume, which is allowed to go up to some extent, allowed to rise over the preset value during the inspiratory time. And once it's achieved, it is set at there. And after uh, that is the limit. So ventilator knows that this limit has achieved and I, I don't have to keep on pushing the uh, lungs to, through the gas. Even if the test inspiratory time is there, ventilator knows that I have to keep the lungs extended to that preset pressure or to ventilator uh, to inflate the lung to that, that pressure tidal volume. So this is the limit which determines the magnitude of the breath and it holds the breath to the that level. So 
this is a kind of limit where the pressure is constant. We can see this part where we want that this has to be limited. So in each, each breath, we want that the uh, peak inspiratory pressure has to be limited up to this and the volume can vary. So ventilator knows whatever may happen, I have to give the breath with this much, much of pressure and the volume can vary across the breath. Another one is this, when we set the time, volume has a limit, then pressure can vary in between the breath. So here is the role of limit, how these are the limit variables for a particular breath. Then coming to the cycling. Now the uh, when breath has started, it has to be pushed, the gas has, has been pushed in the baby's lap. And now the ventilator needs to know that when I have to initiate the exhalation. So for the exhalation, exhalation wall has to open and the gas flow has to cease. So the, this would this is called as cycling. So this variable, the variable which, which signals the ventilator for the cycling and the termination of the inspiration in, and initiation of the exhalation is called as a cycling variable. So the ventilator can cycle at the time. So if, if we have set a pre, preset TI, ventilator knows as I have to give this flow rate, gas flow to this, to that much of PIP and 0.4 second is, is the TI. So ventilator would cycle the breath at the end of the 0.4 second. So that is what is called as time cycling. Then there could be a flow cycling. So we know that there is a flow rate. Rates are in the liters per minute. We will understand that more in the graphics. So the flow rates are there. So th then there could be a cycling. So a, a, a particular flow rate is achieved. And then ventilator knows that if this much of flow rate is achieved and it is de decelerating, I have to see end the inspiration and start the exhalation. So that is called as flow cycling. And then there is volume cycling also in which the tidal volume, particular tidal volume is taken as a cycling variable. So coming to the time cycling first. So these are two graphs. This is a pressure time scalar and this is a flow time scalar. So uh, we can see that ventilator has been giving a pressure to, to this PIP limit to this TI time and this is a flow graph. So we can look, see that flow rate has ceased. Ventilator has given the flow and now patient's PIP is achieved, but ventilator has been given a command that it doesn't, it would not allow the baby to exhale until this TI is achieved. So baby's lung would remain inflated to that much of duration and then exhalation would start. So the cycling would start after the preset TI. So this is just a time cycling. Then coming to the flow cycling. So again, we have a pressure time graph and this is a flow time graph. So flow rate is like if once the gas and are pushed into the baby's lung, there is a flow rate. So it first goes to the peak and then it, it starts decelerating. And this is the peak flow rate. So as the peak flow rate goes to 10 to 15% of the maximum value, if we set it as this, say it has a 100% peak and this is, we, we can say, see this, this could be a, taken as a 10%. So ventilator is given command. Once the flow rate is achieved to the 10% limit, it will open the exhalation valve and exhalation is started. So this is called as flow cycling. So here you can see that baby's lungs are not being kept in a particular distended state because we have set some preset pre TI time. Here that inspiratory time is being determined by the patient's lung mechanics. So this is a time cycle phase where you can see there is a gap between inspiration and exhalation flow. And in, in case of flow cycling, it is a smooth curve. So coming to the modes of ventilation, once we have understood the trigger limit and cycle, these, which are phases of the breath or vari variables of the ventilator breath, then we can understand very easily what is the mode of ventilation and how it works and their relative pros and cons. So the mode of re ventilation refers to the sequencing or pattern of breath delivered to the patient based on the above three variables, which we discussed in the previous slides. So the conventional mode of ventilation include co controlled mandatory ventilation, which is just always discussed in the mode of ventilation class, but nobody uses this. Then there could it assist control ventilation, SIMV mode of ventilation, this is synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation and pressure support ventilation. So the controlled breath that is totally controlled by the patient is IMV or CMV. 
एंड देन स्पॉन्टेनियस ब्रेथ और पेशेंट ट्रिगर ब्रेथ और एस आई एम बी एस एस कंट्रोल और पी एस सी सो कमिंग टू देंडेटरी आई एम बी फर्स्ट दीज वेर दिमिटिव काइंड ऑफ मोड वेयर पेशेंट मैंडेटरी ब्रेथ आर डिलीवर्ड एट रेगुलर इंटरवल बेस्ड ऑन द सेट ब्रेथ रेट एंड पेशेंट इफ द पेशेंट वॉन्ट्स टू ब्रीथ इन बिटवीन द ब्रेथ वेंटिलेटर ब्रेथ इट बिकम्स एसिंक्रनिंग so this ventilator would start giving the breath irrespective of the patient effort it whatever patient is breathing in between it would not sense its efforts and it would not synchronize it and it will just keep giving the breath as per the set ventilatory rates so th this is the mandatory breath this is the mandatory breath and here the patient is breathing but if the patient wants to breathe here it will not sense and it will keep on giving breath as per the given command i would say if somebody is not using a uh, flow sensor any mode of ventilation is imb so if we really have to optimize our ventilation as per the mode we have to use the flow sensors optimally so what we can see in the intermittent imb mode of ventilation that breaths are given by the pressures uh, the breaths are given at the preset interval the time between the breaths are fixed and there would be lot of asynchrony which will lead to variable tidal volume across the breaths so obviously this doesn't seem to be a very good choice so it has lot of disadvantages asynchrony ineffective gas exchange fighting with the ventilator gas trapping and air leaks so next is the simp mode of the ventilation which uh, is the most widely used mode of the ventilation to best describe what we call as time cycled and pressure limited so most of the as we know that in the neonatology mostly we are using pressure uh, limited ventilation that is we set the pip we set the peep we set the ti so this is a pressure limited ventilation and it is a time cycle so the uh, duration of the breath is determined as per the set ti so time cycle pressure limited mode that provides a set number of mechanical inflation and here synchronization is happening the s main, means for the synchronization that ventilator knows that i have to synchronize synchronize the patient spontaneous effort and then allow the efforts to go up to the given magnitude however the patient is allowed to breathe spontaneously in between there is a trigger window so as per set rate there would be trigger window if the rate is uh, set as 20 the trigger rate window would be 3 second if the rate is set as 30 the trigger window would be 2 second so if no spontaneous effort is detected during a trigger window window a mandatory inflation is given otherwise ventilator wants e all the efforts to synchronize the inspiration with the patient effort and spontaneous breath in excess of the set ventilator rate are not supported so here we can see as i am doing spontaneous breathing so he, this is the respiratory cycle time that that is a one cycle time which is which ventilator knows that i have to have this time and uh, here patient has started a breath and ventilator has sensed it and after that if the patient wants has some respiratory effort patient is breathing spontaneously then again in the next trigger window uh, a breath is started so if we see in this lower slides here what is happening a breath is initiated and ventilator has given it, it to the supported it then uh, somehow bb is not breathing in another trigger window so it saw that not breathing not breathing so it it is given a mandatory breath so during all the respiratory cycle the micro processor inside the ventilator set the trigger windows and keep on checking that i have to give uh, 30 breaths if it has been set of the same magnitude and if the patient would initiate a breath in that trigger window i would give that breath to the maximum effort and rest of the breath would be get taken by the patients so this is how so uh, you can see that during a whole cycle some there is a mandatory minute ventilation is happening and there is a some spontaneous respiration is happening and ventilator is trying to synchronize the inspiratory effort with the ventilator breaths and the cycling is the uh, happening by the time inspiratory time is set and ventilator knows that i have to give the breath to that time so uh, in the simb that the breath to breath time may not be uh, set like in the imb you know that the between the two breath there would be a a set time but here it is not a fixed time if the patient has initiated a spontaneous effort ventilator knows that i have to give this breath so and the tidal volume would be more uh, effective and better than the imb
which this one yes this one this this you want to uh, ये वाला हाँ ये यस because ventilator detects सब कुछ कर रहे हैं but उसको पता है कि उसको सारे में support नहीं कर रहे हैं we will see this further more the ventilation of this culture here what is happening that हमने ventilator को ये command दिया है कि आपको एक मिनट में thirty breaths देने हैं सी आपने थर्टी का साइकिल वैसे थर्टी थोड़ा कम है न्यूनेट के लिए लेकिन हम अंडरस्टैंडिंग फोकस के लिए थर्टी मिनट लेते हैं देन वी नो दैट इच इन इच टू सेकेंड मेंटेलेटर को पता है कि हर दो सेकेंड में मुझे एक फार्टी थर्टी का सिचुएशन लेते हैं जिसमें आपको फिफ्टीन का क्लेरिटी चाहिए फाइव का पिंक चाहिए और टी आई पॉइंट फोर रखने के तो वेंटिलेटर को पता है कि हर दो सेकेंड में मुझे एक ब्रेथ ऐसी देनी है जो उसकी पी आई सिक्सटीन होगी जिसका टी आई पॉइंट फोर होगा उसके बाद बच्चा जो भी ब्रीथ कर रहा है वो ब्रीथ कर सकता है तो पूरे एक मिनट में उसको इतने ब्रेथ देने हैं लेकिन वो एक मिनट के थर्टी सेकेंड्स में वो सारे ब्रेथ साथ में नहीं देगा देर इज अंसन आइडिया इट हैज अ ट्रिगर विंडो उसकी एक ट्रिगर विंडो है दो सेकेंड की वो दो सेकेंड में उसे पता है कि एक ब्रेथ देनी है और अगले चार सेकेंड के बीच में मुझे वेट करना है कि वो बच्चा सेंस कर उसको पता है कि मुझे अगर बच्चा एफर्ट लगाएगा तो मुझे उसको सेंसनाइज करना है मुझे बच्चे को फाइव मिनट करना है Ventilator knows that he doesn't have to fight with the wave, so it would sense the respiratory effort. So in each trigger window, it wants to give a breath which has magnitude of what we want to give. Apart from that, these are also being sensed, but उसको पता है कि इसको मुझे support नहीं करना. So sensing is one thing, but supporting is another. उसको किस उसको कितने breath support करने हैं, कैसे support करने हैं, that is being determined by the trigger window, right? आपने ये देखा कि ये प्रेशर ग्राफ है या स्लो ग्राफ है ठीक है प्रेशर ग्राफ में हम स्पॉन्टेनियस ब्रेस की कैन नॉट डिटेक्ट लाइक दिस जैसे आप स्लो में देख रहे हैं स्पॉन्टेनियस बट ये छोटे छोटे स्लो में देख रहे हैं ठीक है ये प्रेशर ग्राफ है ये फ्लो ग्राफ सो दिस आर द कंटिन्यूअस एफर्ट दिस इज द मैंडेटरी ब्रेथ दिस इज द मैंडेटरी ब्रेथ दिस इज द मैंडेटरी ब्रेथ ये मैंडेटरी है ये मैंडेटरी है ये मैंडेटरी है ये है मैंडेटरी ब्रेथ का इंटरवल जो है थोड़ा बीच वाले को पता होगा बाद में स्पेसिंग आता तो इसमें भी तो ऐसे ही होगा बाद में स्पेसिंग आ गई यहां पे लेकिन थोड़ा ये जैसा बीच वाले ब्रेथ में तो एक अलग मैंडेटरी का दूसरा कुछ चलाना है मैंडेटरी है सिंक्रोनाइज इंटरमीडिएट मैंडेटरी सिंक्रोनाइज बाद में जो है इंटरवल में मैंडेटरी है इंटरवल को फिक्स करना है बाकी नहीं इंटरवल फिक्स नहीं कर
ईच ब्रेथ इज सपोर्टेड वेंटिलेटर इज सेंसिंग जब भी बच्चे ने इनिशिएट किया उसने स्टार्ट कर दिया तो इफ वी हैव सेट अ रेट ऑफ थर्टी वेंटिलेटर रेट तो यहाँ पे पेशेंट ने डिसाइड करनी है बट पेशेंट वुड इनिशिएट अ ब्रेथ एंड इंस्पिरेटेड टाइम इज डिटेटर माइंड बाई अस so baby has generated a breath he uh, has generated a trigger here ventilator has sensed it given the ventilation to this much of ti and then cycled it so this is how it works so here aapko kya samajh mein aa raha hai ki mandatory ventilation jo hai wo total minute ventilation is more more effective agar if the patient is not breathing so what ventilator knows ki usko agla matlab usko dena hi hai then it works as a imv like uh, it is giving a control ventilation to in case of apnea so again uh, it works like it determines the ventilator it sends the ventilator uh, patient trigger in each trigger window and give the breath but here all the breaths are supported in simv all the breaths were not being supported so here much of the uh, assistance is there the tidal volume uniformity is there all the breaths are supported so it is a good mode for critically sick babies or whenever you get a very sick baby and uh, you are starting the ventilation and it can be taken as an initial mode for the sick babies but problem can be hyperventilation and you are just not allowing the baby to breathe and uh, the mandatory ventilation may be high then coming to the pressure support ventilation so is me koi problem hai we understood that fine then we can understand this very well that yeah here what is happening the spontaneous breath are being supported all the breaths are supported Yes, cycling is time only. So here, yeah, here it is very much important that again the inspiration is being synchronized when ventilator is sensing breath. Rate is determined by the patient, but TI is not. The rate is the one patient is deciding. The patient is initiating all the breath, but inspiratory time is determined by the user. Right? So the machine got set set triggers. They got the machine has set triggers. पेशेंट अगेन लाइक असेस कंट्रोल बट साइकिलिंग इज स्लो साइकिलिंग हियर वी आर नॉट डिटरमाइन हियर वी आर नॉट कंट्रोलिंग द इंस्पिरेटरी टाइम सो साइकिलिंग इज हैपनिंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ द लंग मैकेनिक्स और इट इज एज़ पर द पेशेंट स्पॉन्टेनियस एफर्ट्स सो पार्शियल वेंटिलेटर सपोर्ट इन व्हिच साइज ऑफ ईच ब्रेथ इज डिटरमाइंड पार्शियली बाय द पेशेंट मस्कुलर एफर्ट एंड पार्शियली बाय द वेंटिलेटर सो हियर वी कैन सी दिस इज अ प्रेशर सपोर्ट वेंटिलेटर ब्रेथ so what is happening here this is a pressure time scaler or graph and this is the flow time graph so this is a limit here we are setting this is the inspiratory time and this is exhalation so here it is the onset of respiration this is the flow rate we have to really understand the flow graph to understand the psv and what we know that this is the inspiratory portion this is the ex expiratory portion this is peak inspiratory flow rate and if you see it as a 100% this is around 15% of the peak flow rate it is also called as idt or inspiratory termination trigger or inspiratory termination sensitivity so what, here what is the ventilator is sensing it is sensing that uh, this flow rate is going to the 15% of the maximum then it will open the exhalation valve so yahan pe ti we are not setting the ti in this case what is happening the the exhalation valve is opening and exhalation start ho gaya when peak flow rate is achieved to the 15% of the say this can be altered but mostly a kam set kar lete mostly 10 to 20% or 15% is the good number to set it so in the press uh, support ventilation what is happening the magnitude of limit is decided by the user or machine but uh, initiation of the breath termination of breath both both is in the control of the baby so here it is the PSV, right? So here breaths are supported, breaths are initiated by the patient, and the inspiratory time is also controlled by the patient. Any uh, issue with this? Yes, sir. So, uh, so again, this is the this is a it is a very good synchronization here we we know that patient is not fighting with the ventilator in the exhalation phase. Phase what we say that is in this mode we have inspiratory and expiratory synchrony both. 
decrease work of breathing, less sedation, more efficient at volume de delivery. But however, in case of uh, patient is having very high rate of stay in case of meconium syndrome or central hyperventilation, the, all the breaths are supported and it can lead to uh, hyp hypocapnia or uh, hyperventilation. And it has there has to be patient effort. So again, if in, in this mode, if the patient doesn't breathe, you have to set a backup ventilation rate. And that would be, uh, if the baby is in apnea, that ventilator would take care of that. So uh, just to summarize, in the case of IMB, there is no inspiratory trigger. There is no assistance. Ventilator rates are fixed. Inspiratory time is fixed. And PIP is fixed. In case of SIMB, we have inspiratory trigger, which is controlled by the baby. Assistance of each breath is not there, but ventilator breaths are being assisted. And we have fixed inspiratory time and PIP is fixed. In case of assist control, we have inspiratory trigger. Assistance of each breath is there. Uh, ventilator respiration rate would vary because if the baby is taking, it will be determined by the baby. Otherwise, it is a backup rate. And the TI is fixed. In case of PSV, we can say that trigger, assistance, and uh, rate and TI all are being determined by the baby. So a few words for, about the newer mode. Uh, if we understand the basic mode, I can uh, say that we have uh, do maximum judgment to the baby. But just to sum up a few, uh, just to uh, mention a few modes, like we must have heard of SIMB with volume guarantee, volume of pressure support, PRVC, MMB, and ANAVA, and uh, proportional assist ventilation. So all these newer mode of ventilation are just what they are trying to do. They want to avoid the ventilation in those lung injury. Whenever we uh, choose a mode of ventilation, either a pressure limited or volume limited, there is another variable which varies. In the pressure controlled ventilation, tidal volume varies. In the volume controlled ventilation, the pressures vary. So, some amount of ventilation in those lung injury is happening. The more, newer mode of ventilation try to ensure that we try to control both of the things uh, uh, in the set limits. So, in the case of volume guarantee, it is a volume targeted time or flow cycle pressure controlled ventilation. It remains pressure controlled ventilation. You have to set a PIP. But what the ventilator does, it chooses a target tidal volume and a pressure limit and microprocessor compares the axial tidal volume and the pressure inflation. So it adjusts the pressure and uh, pressure in with each way to ensure that tidal volume delivery is efficient. It is an added feature in the SIMB or PSC and it ensures uniform tidal volume delivery as we saw in the SIMV, there was uh, some inconsistent, uh, inconsistent uh, consistency in the tidal volumes in the breath to breath. So if we add VG, it tried to ensure that this much of set tidal volume would be delivering. Then we have PRVC in which uh, we can understand more in this graph that ventilator first start, ventilator note that it has to uh, give this much of set tidal volume. This is the set tidal volume bar. It will give a test breath. And, uh, and see how much tidal volume is being delivered by this pressure. It will again increase the pressure in another breath and it will again increase the pressure so that this tidal volume is achieved. Subsequently, if the uh, tidal volume is getting high, it will decrease the pressure. So it keeps on doing this in uh, each uh, three breaths to determine that pressure and volumes are within the uh, de desired limits. So again, uh, it is a good mode to ensure the uh, uniform tidal volume, uh, uh, tidal, uh, tidal volume ventilation, and uh, it has a better uh, ventilation oxygen mis, uh, matching. So at the end, all parameters needs to be set at the initiation, and we need to understand that what we are setting in particular mode and what has to be decided. SIMB and patient trigger ventilation is always preferred, but it would not be happening if you are not using flow sensors. In the sick children, you can start with the cyst control in mild, mild to moderate disease. You can start with the SIMB. Choose a mode in which you are confident. All the babies can be ta uh, taken care by any mode, be it SIMB, be it PSB, or be it assist control. You need to know the pros and cons, and monitor the delivered parameters also, and set the alarms for the uh, for the parameters which are uh, not controlled. So sophisticated machine do wonders in intelligent minds. So we have to train. It is not only the machine and mode which makes the difference. Thank you.